This is the Killen Report, and I'm Michael Killen, the host. And we all know there's a new president in Washington and a new administration. And I've been thinking a lot about what impact that administration has on California, the United States, energy and climate policies. So I've invited Jim Sweeney, and he is the head of an important center at Stanford, the Precord Energy Efficiency Center. Also, he is the head of the Silicon Valley Energy Summit that is coming up shortly. Uh, and that's going to be a, the focus, his, his upcoming event. And also, he's a fellow from the Hoover Institute. So he's planning his June 23rd Silicon Valley Energy Summit 2017, and I want to ask him what impact the new administration is having on his thinking about what he's going to present in this VIP Energy Summit. Jim, as nice you know, you, Michael. it's always a pleasure to see you. And before we begin, Steve Schneider, who's not with us any longer, one of the great climatologist, wife, Terry Root, was over my house one day, and she started to talk about you. And she said, you are a good soul. <laughs> and I thought She's that was a, good person. a lovely compliment. And then recently, I did a TV show with Paul R. Ehrlich, a man who works in the same organization, Stanford, as you do, or now he's an emeritus. In the interview, he talked about you. Not a lot, but he said, you are a good soul. I would like to know why do two different people say that about you? They're both confused. No, I don't think they are. Yes. Uh, look, at these, these are both people who've been friends of mine. Uh, Terry Root is such a warm um, person. Uh, she's now in Florida, and so yeah. we miss her there. Paul Ehrlich is is still very busy, uh, lots of good ideas out there, and we all have similar environmental values, so I think that's, that's many of the things that have come up. Okay, so I've been associated with you with, is it six energy summits? Yeah, already. Yes. Uh, how many more are you going to produce? Uh, I don't know. One a year until we stop. Okay. Now, um, I'm sure when you're planning this big one for June 23rd at Stanford, you, are, you have themes in your mind. And, and of course, you are affected by what's happening in Washington. You know. uh, what, what's your plan for, uh, you have a theme for the new one? Yeah, this, this summit really is focusing on the interplay of the big three issues for energy that we pay attention to. The economy, the environment, and security. These have always been the, the central themes of energy policy. Right now, this, this current administration is focusing on security. Uh, how do we create independence? That happens to be Project Independence came from Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. So it's a continuation. So we're bringing up security issues, economic issues are fundamental, and the environment issues for energy okay. is really all okay. central. So let me see. The structure you have in your head as you put your plan together is security, economics, and the environment. And you're building your, your keynote speakers and... And usually, George Schultz and Bill Perry, uh, both senior statespersons of this country, are, are usually your honorary 
uh, and both, both men are very on in year. Are they going to be at your event? Um, we're not sure about George. Bill Perry is supposed to be in Japan that day, so uh, I suggested, why don't you just stop by from, it, from Japan yeah. during the, for the conference, then he can go back to Japan, but he didn't like that idea. Okay, so I'd like to go to the structure you have in your head, and you started out with security. And when you, uh, when you say security, are you thinking about the military to make sure the military has good access to energy as the ships go and the planes go flying around? Is that, is that the extent of your vision of security? That's part of the vision of security. Part of the vision of security is, is getting to a point as we've really reached, and we're reaching now where foreign countries cannot use weapon, energy as a weapon against us by reducing our imports. But what we're going to talk about at this, summit, at, at this summit is more grid security. We we're fortunate that we have um, Michael Burbridge who is the, the president and CEO of the California Independent System Operator. They run the grid. The thing that has to keep them up at night is security of, of our electric grid. We have John Wellinghoff, who used to be the chair of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Those are just a couple of the, the speakers. We'll also have another session on, on how to keep your, the businesses and homes secure with the growth of the Internet of Things, the Internet of Everything, where the appliances are talking to each other. How do we maintain security for our electrical system when we have the appliances that can talk with each other, the refrigerators that can send out malware? malware? So if my refrigerator is connected to the Internet and my other world of internet things every one of those devices is a gateway into the internet and a, and a gateway to cause trouble unless we do have the right security on those and the right security system you bet uh, you you we see stories about uh, people's security systems having infected with malware and they're out putting malware on other systems. We've had refrigerators that have sent out malware. And it's not the refrigerators that choose to do that. It's just bad people out there put malware on devices that are not well protected. So how do we make sure we have the right yeah. protection as and, we move forward? And we're talking about billions and billions and billions of devices and devices that get manufactured with the malware. No, usually but, yeah. they're not in, manufactured with the malware. They're usually manufactured without as much security as you'd like. And some bad actor, halfway across the world perhaps, hacks into them and installs malware that causes them to create malware in others. It's, it's really pernicious. So if, if uh, it's the manufacturers that are creating products and services that uh, are not providing the security uh, enough. What do you do about that? Is that what you're going to? I don't know. That's one of the things we're going to talk about. How do we? How should we be moving forward? Now, there's there's many companies that really pay tremendous attention to this, and in fact, they probably can't talk about all of the things they've done for for fear of breaching security. And so many companies are paying attention, but it's not, not 100%. Okay, so you mentioned two men a little while ago who are among others that are going to focus on raising the awareness of the great threat of uh, different threats to knocking down our electric grid. That's right. And, and th they're more than anything going to talk about what are the threats we have and how are we protected and how safe are we really? So we get a, a, a deeper sense of this. So is it for the security, one of the main areas is the threat of hacking and, and uh, cyber threats 
uh, including those that are created by machines and stuff that are attached that are just cause problems. Are you going to, to look at electromagnetic pulses? No, no? Pro probably not. That, that would be a little bit too esoteric. But there's physical threats for the grid. Many people remember the Metcalf uh, transformer that was attacked by many bullet shots into yeah. to it. And that, we could reroute, reroute the grid around that that transformer bank or that, that substation. But it could have been a probe to see if you can shut down Silicon Valley. So there's physical and cyber threats, and, and we want to focus on okay. that. That's one of the sure. themes. Okay, now, a little while ago, that'll be interesting. Uh, I, I actually find, uh, you don't know this, but I have a computer background. And, and uh, you I, understand the problem then? I think. Uh, I think I understand the problem. I don't understand the solution, though. But a little while ago, you also said of the three elements, your triangle, that is your thinking for this new event, what about economics? Well, there's some real economic changes that we're all facing in Silicon Valley. Um, right now, we have the uh, Peninsula Clean Energy Authority and the Silicon Valley Clean Energy Authority, which will become local providers of, of electricity. Um, people in, in San Mateo County and Santa Clara County, um, many cities, most cities in those, uh, unless they opt out, will we'll have those as the retailer of electricity. We have in Marin County and Sonoma County very successful clean energy authorities. So that's a whole economic structural change in energy. We have a um, session on in investing in energy technologies and financing well, could, could I as just well. stay on the economic? Yeah. So uh, I think you're talking about a whole new uh, group of distributors of energy to us retail customers. And it's giving us choice and it, it uh, distributes decision-making or suppliers. And so this is a great threat to organizations like PG&E? No? Yes? It is a threat to the retail part of, of PG&E. Um, they're working with the clean energy aggregators, but now consumers in most of Santa Clara County and in San Mateo San Mateo County will have a choice of their electricity retailers. They won't have a choice of who brings wires down the street. It's going to be oh. one set of wires. But whether their electricity is going to come from, from uh, Peninsula Clean Energy Authority or Silicon Valley Energy Authority, one of those, or PG&E, or other investor-owned utilities, but PG&E around there, is going to be a choice. So they will have choice now. The driving force behind choice is people who want to really get clean energy. Is that yeah, that's money? Part of, that's part of it. And they're all called clean energy authorities. And they have intention of having uh, um, contracts to get cleaner, cleaner. Uh, form of energy. So that's cleaner. a driving force. But another driving force is, is uh, personal choice, uh, yes. consumer choice. Instead of having only one provider of electricity that you can work with, you'll have two providers and you can make a decision. So local choice is also an important issue in yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, and now you, you have also the environment as your third element of, of your structure for thinking about what you want to pre present at your June 23rd, uh, Silicon Valley Energy Summit. Yeah. Um, recently, um, the California legislation, legislator, legislators passed SB 32. Uh, we've already had AB, AB 32 in place that, uh, that reduces, that requires California to reduce its carbon emissions by 2020 down to 1990 levels. This would require California to go 40% below 
the 1990 levels by 2030. So uh, that's going to, if we implement that, and okay. it's a law saying we must, it's going to have potentially profound effects on all of us. So, and it's done for the environment to reduce carbon dioxide. So we'll have a session exploring that. We'll have one of the key ways that we uh, clean up the economy, um, the key way so far, has been energy efficiency. We'll, so we'll have a whole session on um, energy efficiency in practice where we will have, we have a remarkable opportunity um, sort of the father of energy efficiency, Art Rosenfeld, recently I died. I thought you were the father of energy no, efficiency. No, 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 He was a mentor, well, a mentor of mine, mentor Wait. of the others. Yeah. Art Ro Rosenfeld um, uh, died recently, and there will be a celebration of his life the day after our event. So there'll be some luminary, luminaries Inter from across the country, across the in town, and so we will benefit by having some of them as speakers at our conference, a remarkable opportunity. I'll come back to that, but I just want to say, energy efficiency, building a clean and secure economy. Now, I have a copy of this, and I want to say I've gone through this, and I would say anyone who has a job of head of, head of sustainability for a city, a town, a state, anyone who really has to get their handle on the numbers and see energy in a larger context so they can appreciate how they can take advantage of energy efficiency to both save money and get more power, more electricity. This is this energy efficiency by Jim Sweeney. Uh, it's uh, probably a very good book for a lot of people. Uh, let me just just comment on it. This, by the way, is, but this is, we all know about energy efficiency in the small. We know about LEDs and more efficient cars. What we don't know, what, 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 what we don't know, um, a lot of people don't know, is that Energy efficiency has been the dominant force which has decarbonized the U.S. economy. It's been the dominant reason why we're now becoming independent of foreign sources. So okay. I hope people uh, get that picture. And although we know uh, the new head of the EPA has encouraged reducing mileage standards for automobiles, and, you know, that's a little troublesome, but California, which is a big part of the economy, is, is going to go its own way and keep uh, uh, st high, strong requirements for uh, energy-efficient cars. But that reminds me, just an antidote, I was thinking about Volkswagen. And as you know, they cheated on the, the mileage yeah. of their car. Not a pleasant thing. It costs them maybe $15 billion. It's going to continue to hurt their sale. Do you think it would be a good idea if Volkswagen was to get behind and promote the California more progressive energy standards to, to help make up for their past action and to improve the quality of their brand? I think it would be good for all the automobile manufacturers to get behind the more fuel efficiency standards. They're economically attractive for, for people to, who don't want to pay as much for gasoline. So that I would hope that all the manufacturers get behind it. In California, we have a waiver uh, that allows California to set its own standards under the, under the Clean Air Act. And that waiver was granted in, in 2012, and so I don't believe that can be rolled back. So we'll, California will move ahead even if the federal government doesn't. Okay. And about 12 other states have adopted California standards, and that's also acceptable under the Clean Air Act. Okay, 
So on June 23rd for your 2017 Energy Summit at Stanford in that palatial building, the Arriaga Alumni Conference Center, your themes, your structure is security, it is the environment, and it is economic, all wrapped around the use of energy. And uh, you're expecting some luminaries to also show up as a result of the passing of, of a man you, who was uh, the father of energy efficiency, and now he's not. And he, 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 yeah, great person. OK, so now I'd like to ask a question. When you look out at your competitors, organizations that put on energy efficiency or energy summits, uh, you know, I, I'm not in the business as much as you by any means, but I have yet to see another organization putting on energy summits that take what Paul Ehrlich said, a more complete approach, not just appealing to people's logic, but using art, cultural, uh, other aspects of our culture to try to educate, inform, and influence. Who else does it besides you? Well, I don't consider it competitors. Uh, we, we have a, a, the uh, Silicon Valley Leadership Group has an energy and sustainability summit that they, uh, they put on, and we're quite cooperative uh, with them. Um, there, there are other different types of conferences. I don't know of any that's really like this, but what's quite different, and you just touched on it, is I think we're the only one that, that every year features some very provocative and interesting original art. Now, my <laughs> question to you, what art are you going to bring okay. this year to the uh, Silicon Valley Energy Summit? A minimum of two. But for the lobby, I'm bringing a 24-foot painting called Resilience of America in the Era of Trump. The Resilience of America. And it is a painting that uses the infinity sign as a basis for thinking about the sustainability of America. And then it has little different anecdotes or whatever of threats striking that sustainability. And uh, I decided that Trump, you know, he's a novice president, and et cetera, and has some other, other attributes that, you know, we need to consider. I have included him as a threat, uh, along with climate change and some other, you know. So that one is coming 24 feet, 5 foot. And then from hanging around with you a bit, you know, you, I asked you why you made this book a year or so ago, and, and you said to me, well, uh, George Schultz asked you to make... He and, made me do it. He made you do it. And, you know, I said, why in the world would he want you to do it? And then, you know, talking to some other folks around the Hoover Institute, I discovered that he was working on a plan to give recommendations to the, pres the new president. This was before Trump was elected and also to the Congress uh, to help these new folks to develop uh, effective energy and climate change policies. So I looked over George's shoulder, and without asking you any direct questions, or, or our friend uh, uh, Bert Richter and some others, I conjured up what I believe are the five elements, key elements of George's policy, and I have interpreted them, them on a painting as big as this one. And that's, and I was hoping George is, uh, Schultz is going to speak because, uh, you know, he'd probably be talking about his recommendations. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether he'll be here for sure, but what I do know is that those paintings will stimulate conversations, just as they have in each year in the past. And that's one of the wonderful, it's not just artwork, it's artwork that stimulates conversations and thought, and that's what these will do again. And that reminds me, could I have a photo of the first painting 
that Jim Sweeney was trying to put at his event several years ago. It's sustainability, 24 feet. I also want to share, since um, we've had a relationship now for, I don't know, seven, eight years, yeah. and I've always tried to have you as a guest, and I hope somebody from your team before the June 23rd is also a guest that will go into some other aspects of what you're going to do. But when we first started, I think one TV station aired my show, this one for Atherton, Menlo Park, Palo Alto, Stanford. And now um, you know, there are a couple of syndicators who plan to expose this show to about 100 television stations across the nation. Spectacular. That's great. And well-deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, you, you uh, have honored me greatly. So we are getting, I guess we've had a problem putting up the photos. I'll put them up. Uh, one of my assistants will put them up uh, uh, momentarily. But we're going to end soon. So, so Jim, I'm getting ready to uh, be at your uh, event on June 23rd. And I also want to say, you know, I happen to be a little bit of a shy person, believe it or not. But every time I walk into your event, like a stranger, the people are so welcoming. Your team is such a lovely group. And the people who are there are always so open. And I always feel so good. And I always meet so many nice, interesting people. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Michael Killen of the Killen Report. My guest has been Jim Sweeney. He is the head of the Precourt Energy Efficiency Center at Stanford. He's a Hoover Fellow. He is the head of the Silicon Valley Energy Summit. And I hope to see you on June 23rd at Stanford. Thank you. Thank you.